Let me conclude this talk by noting what we can learn from the dialectic of these narratives and these apologies for slavery. The simple and tidy answer is that we need both. We need narratives to remind us of the connection between the slave past and our present, and we need the apologies as a prelude to the meaningful work of repairing damage done by that history. The narratives are able to generate on the horrors, elaborate on the horrors of slave life, while the apologies remind us that people repudiate and feel remorse for those horrors. The literary arts and the political arts work hand in hand to remember and to redeem. That is the tidy answer. But it is an answer, I think, that is wrong. The implication of Toni Morrison's comments on slavery as a rememory that never dies, which I suggest is to some degree the point most contemporary narratives of slavery are making, is a fundamental challenge to the ways that we can reconcile the narratives and the apologies. Rather than complementing or supplementing each other, I want to suggest that the narratives rather alert us to the insufficiency of apologies. And the, is insufficient, sorry, and the insufficiency is not just that the crime of slavery is too great to be encompassed by any act of remorse, no matter how sincere, no matter how much attended by material reparations, but rather, that the discourse of apologizing is inimical to the work these narratives advise, which is the work of remembering. The theologians and theorists of the apology forgiveness dynamic stress that forgiveness, to some extent, is premised on the denial of memory. Pope John Paul II wished to approach the millennial jubilee year in a spirit of what he called, quote, the purification of memory. Forgiving requires what political scientist Mark Amstutz calls, quote, a moral reformation of memory. Forgiving, according to political theorist Hannah Arendt, is a redemption from the predicament of irreversibility, of being unable to undo what one has done, because forgiving, quote, serves to undo the deeds of the past. In personal relationships, it would be difficult to imagine the pain of having to live without the power to undo what we did to, the, to hurt those we love the most. In politics, though, the power to undo is a much more nefarious thing. I will end by citing one instance from American history where that power was exercised. In 1705, the Virginia General Assembly ratified the racial basis of slavery in the colony by passing a statute defining who, quote, could be held as real estate, unquote. The next sentence in the statute declares that any master who accidentally kills a slave in the course of correction shall be free of all punishment as if such accident never happened. It is a curious law that can change something that happened, an event, into something that never happened, a non-event. That law defined who was a slave. It was someone to whom something did not happen. One wonders what kind of apology, undoing the deeds of the past, can undo that. Thank you.